Hello everyone, Jose J. Garcia with Garcia Home University. Quick note, quick video, how to create a note, what it looks like, number breakdown. I feel like I should be sharing the whiteboard on this one here, and I probably would do. I'll do another video like this, a little more specific, broke down, step-by-step -step kind of thing. But I wanted to toss this. I was reading some of these comments coming in, and of course, the whole thing is how do you finance, how do you create a note, how do you structure an RTO, that sort of thing. Great questions, by the way, but this one here caught my attention a little bit. Uh, can you... Basically, can you buy a mobile home and resell it as is kind of sort of thing? And the answer to that is, well, yeah, you know, you that's more like a wholesale in a sense. You know, I, I take it. You can still buy it, you know, pay it, own it, whatever, for however long a time that is. But, you know, double wholesale works that way as well because you pay, you actually come out of pocket, whether it's your money or somebody else's money. You come in, you take the home, it's yours. You know, the seller's out of the way, out of the picture. That's usually a cleaner sale kind of thing. I like it that way. And then you find yourself a new buyer. You obviously up the market, you know, whatever it is that the market allows for you to be able to sell it and still be a good deal. And then you make the profit, you make in between. So that's always a good strategy. Um, of course, I do see some investors who try to sell some of these things for seems like more expensive than a brand new one. So then there's that, but quick note, let me break down something like this here for y'all. So let's just say on this example, uh, buying a mobile home for $4,000. Okay. Okay. Buying a mobile home for 4,000, you spend 500 and 500. So let's say you do take a mobile home. Now, what you're actually going to do is nothing more than maybe a cleanup right? A uh, pure cleanup, remove all this stuff because you, you will be surprised at how many investors back away from a deal simply because they walk into the mobile home and it's full of trash bags. It's full of just trash all throughout the home. They will walk away from that when that is one of the easiest things to rehab It's as all it is is a cleanup. However, these same investors will walk into a mobile home where the floor is soft, it's caving in, the ceiling needs repairing, the, the walls have been punched in. That's a good deal. Look, they're both good deals in a sense. If the numbers check out, great. But trash inside of a mobile home seems to scare more mobile home investors than any other. I don't get it. Cleanup is easy. One dumpster, two, three hundred dollars. Even if it does fill it up, pay somebody a couple hundred bucks, get that cleaned up. You're good to go. So let's use that on this example. Let's say you buy a mobile home for four thousand. You spend a thousand dollars cleaning it up, just getting all the junk out of it. So you have five thousand into the mobile home. Now you want to finance this, create a note. So let's say you finance it for somebody. You ask for $2,000 minimum, $2,000 minimum down. That means you, that your quotation is $300,000 $3, into the hole. Plenty fine. How long will it take you to get that money back? That's always the question. And always remember to ask yourself, how long can I go without my money? Once you get your money in full and you're collecting, that's passive infinite returns. Great stuff. But until you get to that point, can I go six months, seven months without my $3,000? Only you can answer that question. 5,000 all in, you pay, you get a $2,000 payment. They they owe you 3,000 in a sense to be all in, but you're going to sell the same mobile home for 10,000. I think I might've just confused you a little bit there. So let me break that down again. You're all in at 5,000. You're selling a mobile home for 10,000. Flipping, in other words, you're going to finance, you're going to create a note. So you do a 2,000 down payment and you finance the remaining 8,000 at let's say 9.9%. Uh, Big questions on that. A lot of questions is how much interest should I charge? How much should I be? You know, that is a question for your attorney. Only he can answer that. I would say stick within what is right. Don't over gouge somebody ever. That's not a good thing. Not a good practice by any means. Should you end up in court for whatever reason, it will not look good if your interest is so outrageous that the judge is looking at you crazy. That will happen. Don't do that. So in this example, again, let's say we the, we create a note for 8,000 and 9.9 percent interest. That's 195 of payment. There's a lot rent, of course, that you'll have to deal with. Uh, that will be about 51 months. So four years and about three months to get your money back and then some. So this is only an example, not one of my preferred ones. Absolutely. I believe in getting your money back, everything that you have out right away or within the six months, which means three quarters of it in down payment first six months, all my money back. That's how I like it. Following up, passive. I like passive. So pretty simple on that, right? 10,000, you resold, you have 5,000 into it. You took a $2,000 payment, you finance the remaining and it takes you X amount of time to get it. Keep in mind this, you are the bank, you're the financer in a way. So in a sense, um, if you're going to finance this, you can go a little bit of a market, uh, rental market. Why? Because again, you're a bank, no different than if you were to buy a house. You know, you may be able to rent a house for $700 a month, but that same house now as a payment 
um, maybe a thousand. Could be backwards now. You know how the economy is and the way the markets are. But overall, what I'm saying is that now you're offering something that nobody else is going to do. No bank credit union is going to loan on a mobile home. So if you finance to them, you're in a sense giving them, you know, a right to be able to buy something. You're providing a service that nobody else is. You can market just a little bit higher. If the rental rates in the area are seven, eight hundred, I would say, well, you know, go maybe nine hundred. But the difference, because again, you have a lot written is something to keep in mind, but overall, you're just trying to stick within those numbers so that it makes sense and you're not setting somebody up for failure. Biggest thing on that. I will make a video on this. I like to break numbers down a lot. Uh, I love when it comes to numbers because that's when you really truly see ROIs, returns on your investments and see what makes sense. What makes sense if the ROIs are there? Simple as that. But I need the board. I need the board so I can be showing you step by step. Talking to your body might have confused you a little bit more. I hope not. But if it did, send me an email at j at garciamhu.com. Visit my website at garciamhu.com. Till next time, thank you for watching.